I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring an enchanting world with Betty Ubion. She is the author of The Master Rug Beater. We're going to take a deep dive into this captivating children's story that masterfully weaves lessons on perfectionism and self-acceptance. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Betty, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Well, thank you for asking me to come on onto your, I was going to say on board, but. <laughs> <laughs> come on board. We're glad to have you on our ship. Um, great story, imaginative story, rich in, you know, Middle Eastern culture as well. Tell us what's behind this book. Are you acquainted with Middle Eastern culture? Is that how you wrote it? Or did you research it to find out about it? Tell me about that part of the journey. No, well, I actually, it popped out because I meet up besides my friends and other people. Everybody wants everything to be perfect. It's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And I, I work with a lot of um, community communities uh, to attempt to achieve safe communities mm -hmm. because we are all people and our community, our first community is in our homes where we are. Our next one is our neighborhood and then all the rest of the communities, the towns and that. And it's up to us to keep say everything safe. So it sort of started that way. But then how can we, if everybody sets the objective as perfect, we have to have everything perfect? Well, we don't know what that is. <laughs> yep. And so right away we failed. <laughs> exactly. And then yeah. people Perfection don't know what Perfection is to do. the standard. I've absolutely failed. That's for sure. Um, this story book is, is great, though. It tells the story of a man who is the master rug beater. He cleans rugs. It's as a tradition is in the Middle East, where every speck of sand and dirt must be gone. Let's give the folks at home an overview of the story. Okay. Uh, I don't know where to begin with that. <laughs> How about once upon a time, there was... A master rug beater. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. And uh, I think I met him. I actually, uh, I had a friend who invited me to Afghanistan. Mm. Have you ever been invited to a place where there's a war going on? <laughs> no, no, that's, some, then... that's a dubious invite. You might be wondering, why is she inviting me to a war zone, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, he did. He invited he did. me to to yeah. to, to uh, a war zone, and so it's kind of interesting because we didn't have um, we didn't have. Uh, I I just kind of got up and went. <laughs> mm. Okay. And while there, of all things, they talked about uh, they had beautiful silk oriental rugs, and I've always liked oriental rugs, but silk threads. And then they introduced me to a guild. They still had a guild there who watched over all these rugs being made. Mm -hmm. And and you first had to go and find the thread. <laughs> so how do you find the silk thread? <laughs> yeah. Kind of like a needle in a haystack. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then later in Myanmar, which we used to call Burma, mm -hmm. um, I, I met some women who were actually taking silk thread and weaving it into rugs out mm -hmm. in the middle of a village that sat in the middle of the river. Yeah. It was a village built on water. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> it was like a whole little town. And I'm going, oh my gosh, the world is so different from the world I come from. <laughs> 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 How do they manage? And, uh, and, you know, and so then they did introduce me in both places to people who clean the rugs. And that's how I met a rug beater. And it reminded me, if if I may continue, I'm a storyteller afterwards. After yeah, all. <laughs> exactly. It reminded me. Um, when my mother would ask me to clean her rugs, and I looked at the rugs, I said, "How do you clean rugs?" And she had a clothesline, and she hung them up on the clothesline. She said, "Next time you hang them up, mm -hmm. and here you." 
the stick to beat them. And that's how we're going to get all that dust out of the out of the rugs. In those days, we didn't have vacuum cleaners. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, in these other countries, they don't have vacuum cleaners. <laughs> you know? They beat the rugs. Just, they beat the rugs. <laughs> yeah. And so um, and in any case, I thought of that in terms of perfection. Mm. You know, are you beating beating everything to the rug finally a beautiful beautiful rug he beat it to the very last thread then what do you do because you don't have a rug and you don't know how to take the thread and 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 weave it into a rug what do you do so i asked i asked my master rug beater in this story you know he left <laughs> and now i've got to find him <laughs> And that story about finding the the uh, pomegranates under the pineapples, that was a true thing mm. in, in Afghanistan. I, I did live in a little tiny place, and I wanted pomegranates so badly because everybody was <laughs> and they said, you got to go down to the little grocery store. store. <laughs> it was an outdoor thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and look under the pineapples. The man puts the pomegranates under the pineapples. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> so, so a lot of this story came out of my uh, time a few years in Afghanistan, and also the other places where I've been. So there's there's a bit of truth to it, and yet I'd hate to think about this poor master rug beater. Here he is, an expert, mm. and he has to leave. Mm. Because he beat the rug threadbare. <laughs> he right. beat the and we do that with our ideas, and I'm doing that right now with the storytelling and answering <laughs> your question. <laughs> exactly. No, that's funny. No, it's great to get that background on the story. So that's what the children's storybook was born out of. And you've put it down on paper to make it a lesson for kids about perfectionism and self-acceptance. And uh, I think that's important. Um, tell us a little bit about the illustrations in the book. How did you go about getting those done? Ah, well, Jamal is a friend of ours. Um, his uh, children actually went to the same school as my grandchildren. So I asked my daughter who knew him, and I showed him the draft, and he he quickly drew up some, some made some drawings. And I said, oh, he understands. He knows what I what He knows what this book is about. <laughs> and then he agreed to do the illustrations. And oh my God, they are absolutely fabulous. Absolutely. And and uh, they're he used watercolor, and it doesn't look like watercolor. Again, this perfection. He's so <laughs> close to perfection with this. That's great. <laughs> Most of the time, when my friends and I do anything with watercolor, we have spots all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you know, uh, very light color with a lot of water on paper when I use it. That's for sure. But some people are masters at it. And that's great. And the illustrations in your book are wonderful. Let's give them a full shout out. What is uh, Jamal's last name? Jamal McLaughlin. Okay, Jamal McLaughlin did a wonderful job with those illustrations. And they definitely helped tell the story as well. Tell me a little bit about what you hope children take away from the book. And have you had the opportunity to read it to any children? Not not for me to read it to any children, but I have had the opportunity of having uh, children with adults learning how to read, hmm. the, the children are learning how to read, that they read it to the adult. Wow. And and that really does, uh, that works quite well, actually. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I'd like, I'm, I plan on getting out and working within the schools, I would love to see this book in all the libraries, public and school libraries, and go to the schools and go to the classrooms and and have them read the book and talk about uh, the master rug. But basically, it's it is it's that last page, and I think that's what you're referring to, mm -hmm. where we we need to accept our our own expertise. So many people, uh, as adults, <laughs> somehow they've lost respect for themselves, right. and and uh, you know, and that's a very sad thing because so many people, you know, you have expertise and then you have things that you can't do. 
Mm-hmm. And so you find a friend or somebody else who can do that if you want to have it done. You know, somebody, so you ask everybody, stand up, who can do this? <laughs> no. Exactly. But yeah. uh, to accept accept ourselves, and instead of instead of saying, "Oh no, I'm horrible, I'm awful, and this and that," you know. <laughs> exactly. Well, I always say we're perfectly imperfect, and there we actually. Go. Yes. In its imperfections is where you find beauty. Uh, Something that is perfect is often too linear, too symmetrical, is not as interesting as something that is imperfect. So there's a lesson to be had there as well. The name of the town that you set the book in is called Samarkand. How do you say it? Samarkand. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes. And is that a real place or a place you invented for the story? No, it's a real place. Yeah. But um, of all things... Uh, when, when I, I was going through some things that my father had on his desk and he wrote a poem called Samarkand I, mm-hmm. and it was unbelievable because he was not, he, he never said anything about being able to write poems and yet he had some there and that one in particular. Wow, <laughs> so there we great. have this, what did you say? The perfect, the imperfection to the exactly. perfect. Exactly. Our perfection <laughs> lies was, in our imperfections. Right. Yeah. Well, Samarkand, I didn't want to put it in it because it's the place where you go to die. Oh. And uh, and it is a real place, though. But it's the beginning. It's not just that. It's the place you go to get on the Silk Road. Hmm. The Silk Road was a trade route. Yeah. So look. So I'm looking for Masrak, the master rug beater. On the Silk Road, mm. I think I think he took off and he's on that road somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, you did a great job with this book. <laughs> Betty Ubian has written a wonderful children's story book that you'll love reading to your children and having them read to you. It's a cross cultural experience as well as a lot of great life lessons in there as well. It is called the Master Rug Beater. It is highly recommended. Betty, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for asking me to do so. This has been a great pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. (laughs) Great talking Uh, with you. And thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs) My pleasure. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford. Thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.